After hours of damage control, crews are finally heading out and have reopened roads, allowing residents to go back home. Construction crews were out here working at Farm City Elevator, Inc. when crews struck a gas line. The Boone County Sheriff says about 200 people were evacuated from their homes. Entire subdivisions had to be emptied out in the Amanda area. The sheriff adds the scale of the leak is rather big, and they started working on it since 1 this afternoon when the incident first happened. And during that time, I got to speak with one resident who said she was on her way home after driving for hours when she realized she had to hit the road once again. Many residents like Mary had to relocate to other areas, whether it was the local fire department around here or a local elementary school. But fortunately, no one was hurt. Mimi crews are still on scene investigating this fatal crash. It happened just before two this afternoon. The truck completely sits mangled up the door off of its hinges. Debris is scattered all around the semi truck. The driver of the pickup pronounced dead at the scene. Two children who were passengers in the pickup truck are now in the hospital with serious injuries. The identity and the ages of the victims involved in this crash have not yet been released. Eric and Mimi, I'm here at Dixon High School where school resource officer Mark Dallas stopped what could have been another fatal school shooting. And alongside Officer Dallas today was Governor Bruce Rauner who visited Dixon to talk about public safety. Officer Dallas's quick thinking actions have prompted bipartisan legislation to allow schools throughout the state to have the ability to use taxpayer money to fund a school resource officer and or mental health professionals. Okay, this here is a condemned home, one of thousands in Rockford, but you wouldn't think so taking a quick glance at it. That's because it just got a facelift. Eric and Mimi, I am out here over by this crazy ride. You see, you can see how high these daredevils in these seats are going. You know, there is a lot going on here, a lot of rides, a lot of food and such. Obviously, corn dogs, my favorite, but look at how high these guys are going. Now, I have a couple of daredevils that I pulled off this ride of my own. We have Frank here and Tucker. So Frank and Tucker, talk to me a little bit what it was like when you guys strapped in and were ready for takeoff. What was that like? Eric and Evie, so I might even hop on this ride myself, but we'll see. About 18 years ago, Beloit police responded to this alleyway on 6th and North Street for a 13-year-old girl who had reported she had been sexually assaulted. A methadone clinic is where anyone who suffers from an opioid addiction, whether it's from heroin or prescription drugs, can come and get medication-based therapy. Those who ride the bus and travel through downtown Rockford have been dealing with that for over half a year. I spoke with Rockford Mass Transit District riders who say they're ready to see the finished project of the bus station on West State. RMTD has plans to put benches on Mulberry Street for riders to sit and wait while construction continues. Plus, a trailer is available for riders to spend time waiting for their bus out of the elements. The Boone County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a missing teen. 17-year-old Holly Hicks has been missing since June 26. She was last seen in Belvedere. Authorities believe she may now be in the Rockford area. If you've seen her, you're asked to contact the Sheriff's Office or Crime Stopper. The Sheriff's Department says the break-ins happened in the vicinity of Route 30 and Locust Road and Willow Creek Road. The cars were left unlocked both outside and inside garages. Officials urge residents to keep the doors locked at all times and keep valuables inside your home. They ask residents to report any unusual vehicles in the area. The displaced residents will be staying with relatives. Damages are estimated at $55,000. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. This afternoon, storms made their way through parts of the state line, causing a bit of damage. This is video from Roscoe. Comet crews were on scene trying to fix a down power line near Crockett and Burr Oak Road, one mile south of Elevator Road. Police say he punched a woman in the face and tried to steal her car. The incident happened around 10 Tuesday night at the Schnooks on 11th Street. The woman refused to get out of her car, and the suspect eventually ran off. A police canine unit tracked him to a home on Kinsey Street about a half a mile away and arrested him. Kenneth Lenton Jr. now faces several charges. The suspect is over. Now two people are in police custody. Rockford police took Raheem King and his girlfriend Lakesia Kizart into custody just hours ago. And authorities say they didn't have to go very far to find them. We're very happy to have Mr. King in custody at this time as he was a great threat to the public. The 22-year-old suspected gunman in the slaying of three people is behind bars. Raheem King turned himself in at the Winnebago County Justice Center Wednesday evening, but not without an attorney by his side. The following charges um, were issued 
uh, four counts of first-degree murder against Raheem King. Um, those possible penalties, should he be convicted, um, would be automatic natural life. King's girlfriend is 21-year-old Lakeisha Kizzert. She also turned herself in early Wednesday morning. She is now facing charges of aiding and abetting a fugitive. That is a class 4 felony, possible penalty of one to three years in the Department of Corrections. Officials say the community can now feel some relief that a man suspected of such a violent crime is now off the streets. We have a person who is dangerous and has committed a heinous crime in our community in custody and that we can now allow the criminal justice system to do its work. The shooting that killed three men on Saturday after a night of fun on a party bus turned deadly. Investigators say King used an assault rifle to shoot and kill Dijon Sistrunk, Martavius Blake, and Sean Anderson. All of them were on board a private charter bus together. The shooting happened on Auburn Street. The bus driver drove about a mile after the shooting to this mobile gas station on Springfield Avenue to call police. Police say a motive behind the murders are unclear. At this point, we don't have any ties to, to being gang related. Uh, but again, there's it's still ongoing and it's a, a fluid case. King is set to be in court as early as tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. There's no time set for Kizart's court appearance, but her bond is set at $1 million. Eric and Mimi, efforts to clean the explosion affected Marengo neighborhood continue today. Among the many homes that were affected, some residents have to start their rebuilding process from nothing. We just heard a big boom and my daughter and I were upstairs and the ceiling fell down on us. One day after a massive explosion at this home, debris still litters the streets and covers yards in this neighborhood. Two lots sit fenced in with burnt remains of what once were two homes. One of them belonging to Kim Kiefer. She and her family fearing for their lives, experiencing firsthand their home burning down. My son uh, got my husband out from underneath all the rubble and they got out and everybody was screaming to get a ladder to get my daughter and I out of the second floor. And the fire jumped up upstairs and we, um, they got us out the back window just in time and then it all went up in flames. The cause of the explosion is still under investigation. About 80 homes are affected by the massive explosion. Many homes now being condemned. The homeowners of the house that exploded were out of town. Marengo Fire Chief Bob Radbury calls that a lucky break. I'm glad they weren't home and, and was very fortunate that nobody was hurt. Nearby residents unaffected by the blast doing what they can to help. So I decided to do what I can here to help out the community as best as possible. Kim Kiefer's son and husband are the only two injuries reported, both considered minor. She says she's grateful they made it out alive, even with all the recovery work still to be done. You know, you've lost everything, and your house is no longer here, and, but everybody got out. Authorities say it can take anywhere from several months to a year to repair the damages on the home. Since the explosion, the Red Cross and Salvation Army have gone to help. The displaced families are expected to move into hotels and, of course, with friends and family. Thank you. A lot of fun, Jerrica. Yeah, definitely. There were a lot of people who were fearless and waiting in line for some pretty extreme rides. Well, there were some who were just excited to be there to take it all in as it was their first time at the fair. Well, I wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, but I wasn't sure if I would go in the bubble cars, the Ferris wheel, or what. Lizzie Lamb and other Stevenson County fairgoers were faced with tons of options to have some fun. And for the Lamb family, their first time at the fair was memorable. We're just seeing them experience it for the first time and just see what we have here. From fair foods and sweet drinks to carnival rides like the Rockstar and then some. I kind of like um, the tornado kind of. Yeah. But it's kind of scary because it feels like we're going to like fall down. But there were those who have attended the fair a few times over the years and have their favorite rides. Mm, probably the big boom, whatever that's called. That big one is called the freak out. It goes high up in the air, spinning and sending its riders back and forth. You can bet there were daredevils who waited in line to take a ride. Awesome. It feels like you're going to go over, but you don't, Like so it just comes back down. But if those intense rides aren't for you... Ready?
did really well. Yeah, and they beat me. I don't know. They did really well. And you know, that was only one step above the Dumbo or the spinning little strawberries <laughs> that they had, right? Yeah, Brilliant I was going slide. to hop on one of those, but I think that was a little bit too much to slide. It fit me just fine. But and the last day for the fair is July 1st. If you make your way there, day passes are $5 and the weekend passes are $20.